Welcome to Remote STEM class, Mr. Dowd, Mr. Dowd here. Happy Wednesday. Hope everyone's having a fantastic day. Sorry, last class, I kind of got a little distracted. Well, not distracted. I didn't know we got the premium version of Screencastify, so I can start doing recordings that are longer than five minutes. And I didn't know that, and uh, yeah. So I ended up just splitting my last video in two because I ended up being eight minutes. Um, but anyways, now that I'm back on top of that, so we're good. So last class, I got a rainbow done, right? Today, I think I'm going to go ahead and do the... I think I'm going to do it for the pot of gold next. So let's look up pot of gold. Everyone loves that, right? So let's see what I can do here. So I think I'm going to go ahead and start with a sphere. Yep, so I'm going to do a sphere. I'm going to make it black, obviously. Actually, I'm going to keep it as white for right now so I can actually see <laughs> what's going on in it. Keep that. I'm wondering if I can change the dimensions. Yeah. So let's actually undo that. Let's look from the top and let's get it a little, a little rounder and let's drop that a little bit. Maybe like that. Lift it up and we can bring in a little bit. All right, so that'll be the basic shape of it. Or actually, you know what? There are other shapes in here. I'm wondering, I remember there was one that looked like a donut. I wonder if that will look the best. So that's under basic shapes. Scroll through these again. If I remember correctly, it wasn't too far in. It's like a tire might not be bad. But I remember there was like a, I think it's called a torus, is the actual name of the uh, shape. It looked pretty good for something like this. Or actually a parabola, parabola, I can't even say it today, parabolic cone. I think that actually would look perfect. I go ahead and rotate it 180 degrees. If I do that, and now, uh, nah, I don't like that. Never mind. Never mind. Here you go, a torus. This is what I was talking about. It's like a donut shape. Yeah, if I do a donut shape along with this shape and invert it. Actually, I'll make that bottom solid. Or a, um, hmm. you know, that's gonna get too complicated. I'm gonna do keep the torus though. So I'm gonna go ahead and put them on top of each other. Let's raise that up a bit. It's actually, if we can go ahead, look from the top view and let's align this. Actually, first, let's get this in a decent shape. If, remember, if I highlight it, I can then go to align and get it aligned perfectly that way. All right. So if I go ahead and group, yeah, if I group this, change it all to black. All right, that's not looking bad. And if I grab another, so before I group that, if I take just the sphere, I just want the sphere. Control C, Control V. If I go ahead and raise that up, bring it over. So just kind of a little bit into it, and I make this the hole. So I want to be able to put um. I want there to look like there is coins in it. So I gotta have that hollow a bit. So if I go ahead and now group that. There you go, I think that looks good. See how it's a little concave in? Makes it look a little good. 
But okay, guys, that's all I have for today. Uh, happy Wednesday. I'll see you guys all tomorrow. Have a great day. Bye. Okay, what's in the pan? You hear it? What's clinking? Hmm, let's see. Oh, it's kind of hot. So I wouldn't recommend doing that with your fingers. <laughs> so, I have eggs. So, you're asking why am I boiling eggs? I am making hard boiled eggs as a snack. You can either um, cut them up and mix them with mayo and make egg salad, or you can just cut them and eat them as is. They're a great source of protein and very easy to make. For these particular two, I only put two eggs in. You could put as many as you want. I put them in the pan, then I filled the pan with water till the eggs were covered. Then, once the eggs were covered in water, I turned the stove on and I covered it with the pan lid just to keep the heat in. Okay, once it started boiling, which has now, you need to give them a chance to cook. Now, as they cook, they might crack. They might, you know, looks like they're breaking or whatever. Don't worry, just let them cook. You want them to be hard boiled so when you drop the egg, it won't smash like a real regular egg. It'll be hard boiled and you just peel the shell off and you can just eat them as is. So they're a good, good way to get a snack in if you are hungry but you don't have time to make anything. You could uh, boil up a bunch of eggs, put them in the refrigerator and then have them for a snack later on. So um, I will show you what they look like when they're done. They take about five to six minutes to cook boiled like this. So I'm just gonna let them boil for a bit and I will see you on the other end when they are done. Hey guys, all right, so the eggs are done. Be very careful when you take them out of the hot water. I use tongs and then I let them sit and then I did rinse them off with some cold water and it's still warm. But they did crack a little bit, but that's okay because these are hard boiled. So if you go like this, See, they're not gonna break. They're just gonna crack. So that's when you peel off the shell. I cooked them for about five to seven minutes. Can't really overcook them unless you walk away, but just be very careful because they can be hot. Okay, so that's what it looks like once you peel off the shell. Okay, and then you can just eat it as is. Some people cut it in half, eat it that way. You might put a little, some people put a little salt on it. Okay, if you wanted to, you can mix it with mayonnaise, break it up a little bit and make egg salad, or you could put it on a salad. But really, they're just like one of those great snacks that if you make a bunch ahead of time and put them in the fridge, then you're good to go. So here's the second one. Okay, and again, I'm gonna cut this in half. And there you go. It's just a hard boiled egg. Okay. Now, if you were making egg salad, you could throw the bowl all back in the bowl and then mash it up with mayonnaise and salt and pepper and put it on a sandwich. Either way you like it is up to you. But like I said, having hard boiled eggs um, for a snack with um, in the fridge, always keep them in the fridge, and as a snack or a meal or whatever, or put them on top of a salad is great. Great source of protein and another healthy snack. Ooh, look at that fell out. How cool is that? So yeah. So anyway, something that's kind of fun and easy to make as long as you make it ahead of time and then you can keep them in your fridge and pop them in your mouth as breakfast even if you don't have time to eat because you're running out the door to school. All right. See you guys far. Bye. Hey, Gator 
Gamers, welcome back to Language in Play. So today we're going to do a quick warm-up and then we are going to look at a monologue. All right, so our quick warm-up. She sells seashells by the seashore. She sells seashells by the seashore. She sells seashells by the seashore. Notice the difference between sea and she in your face. Sea is wide open and bright. She is kind of forward making that O motion. She sells seashells by the seashore. She sells seashells by the seashore. She sells seashells by the seashore. All right, and try and do it as fast as you can with diction, with pronunciation. All right, so we are going to look at a monologue called The Bug. All right, The Bug was written by a student, 11 years old, from Texas. All right. And the genre is dramatic. This is the most dramatic thing that's ever happened to you. All right. So as you're reading it, I want you to think about that genre. We're going to talk a little bit more about genres in the next couple weeks. All right. So this is a story about a kid who encounters a bug. All right. Now, your first reaction might be to squish the bug. However, you are going to have to think about it in this monologue. All right. So I will read through the monologue, and I'm just going to read it through kind of generically because I want you guys to be able to play around with it. So the bug. I thought about smashing it, but then I remembered how bad I felt when I accidentally, on purpose, flushed my goldfish down the toilet. I thought I was setting them free, free to swim out there in the great wide ocean. My mom was pretty upset when she told me that the toilet water does not, in fact, lead to the ocean. So I just sat there, watching this little gray bug. They're called potato bugs. I don't know why. I couldn't resist. I poked him, and he curled into a ball. After a minute or two, he opened back up and carried on his way. I wonder where he was heading. Maybe he was going home to his family, who live in a tiny hole in the earth. I wonder what it would be like to be that small. A pine needle would be like a log. A rock like a mountain. My friend Keegan would have smashed him for sure. He likes to squish bugs to see what's inside. But I left the bug alone. Instead, I laid down on the mossy ground and imagined life as a bug. And that, my friends, is the bug. So, take a look at the monologue. Think about that genre as dramatic. And I want you to try reading it a couple times in a dramatic sense. Okay, remember, this character is conflicted. Should they squish the bug? Should they not squish the bug? Well, how did he feel after the goldfish incident, right? All of that plays into the character. So take a look at it, and we'll be doing a little bit more with it later on in the week. All right, Gators, great job. Hey, guys. Today we're going to be working on drawing a seated figure. So if you have a picture from a magazine to look at or another image that you can use, it's very helpful. Okay, so you want to have a couple pictures or one picture of someone sitting down, a figure, where you can see they're pretty much the whole body. Okay, all right. So take a look at some different images of figures sitting down. So from the head to about the waist is going to be, you could make that similar to what we've been doing when you draw um, the whole standing figure, right? And then we're going to have it bend here where the legs are, they're bent, okay? So we're going to show that in our drawing. Here's another seated figure. Here's another one. Here's another one. Ah, okay. All right, guys, so I think we'll go with this one. So you need a paper and a pencil. If you have an image you can look at, that's great. I'm going to use this one, and you can use this one too. All right, so here we go. So I'm going to start off just by drawing the head. Okay, so I have my head shape to start. I'm going to draw the neck, shoulders, 
Well, I guess I'll make the arms folded as well, just like the person in this image here. Their arms are folded. So I'm going to start to draw kind of like they're behind, I guess. <laughs> their backside there. And that's where we kind of bend the leg. The body is bent here. And it looks sort of like the person's leg is crossed in this picture. So I'm going to do kind of have one leg come up the other leg you're just going to see a little bit of it here and then the knee is bent here that leg kind of comes over the other leg So one leg is overlapping another leg. So that's one way to draw a seated figure. And you can just kind of like pencil in a quick little drawing of some kind of a chair. All right, so there's our seated figure. So that's one way to do it. Give it a try and see how you do. Good luck. Hey guys, welcome back to another episode of Virtual PE. I'm Miss Reedy. All right, we're gonna continue on working out our, our, some two muscles. Uh, today we're gonna work on our deltoids and then uh, we're gonna work on our chest muscle. So for the deltoids, you're going to, I'm gonna double band it. If you want it easier, you can go single. But all we're doing is starting with shoulder width apart and we're just popping it out. Okay, that's your deltoid or your reverse deltoid workout. And then for your chest, you're gonna lay down on your back. I'm gonna open it up and I'm gonna make sure that it's sitting nice and firm behind my shoulder so that way it doesn't roll out from underneath of me. Okay, and then from here, it's going straight up. If you want it harder, again, grab closer to make it harder. Okay, or you can double up your, your resistance band, all right? But those two activities are both gonna be for a 15 count, all right? All right, guys, so let's get to work. Hey okay, guys, your cardio again today. Okay, let me show you the movements. I'll give you a second, we're gonna go. We start off running in place, and we do side shuffles, Run in place, then we're doing some jump squats. Okay, take a second, get ready, we'll get rolling. 15 of our step weights.
watching Enrichment TV, Gators. Remember, work hard, be nice, and we'll see you tomorrow.